Hello, welcome to our channel Elimika Mtandaoni. My name is Agustino Mogosi. Uh, today I'm bringing you the ninth lecture on a series of lectures on uh, information systems. And in this lecture today we'll be talking about uh, achieving competitive advantage, but uh, in today's lecture we'll be talking about the business value chain model in details. So what is the uh, business value chain model and why should we have that and what it, it is exactly? Uh, we'll be talking about that in this lecture. Uh, in the previous lecture, lecture 8, we talked about the Potter model and actually the Potter's uh, five forces model is a very useful model. It's a very helpful to identify competitive forces and to suggest some generic strategies. But it is not very specific about what exactly to do. And it does not provide a methodology to follow for achieving competitive advantage. There is no exact uh, methodology that he, someone can follow so that he, he or she can achieve a uh, competitive advantage. So. If your goal probably is to achieve operational excellence, then where should you start? If you want to achieve operational excellence, where should you start? Uh, here is what we call a business value chain model. It's a very useful model that would answer, will answer the question of how you can achieve operational excellence. When we say uh, the value chain model, this model actually highlights specific activities in the business where the competitive strategies can be best applied and where information systems are most likely to have a strategic impact. So with this uh, model, the, the specific activities will have to list some activities within an organization, let's say activity one, activity two, activity three. And from this activity, we see where can a uh, competitive strategy be best applied and where information system uh, can most uh, be likely to have some strategic impact. It's unlike the Potter's model where it was very general, uh, but uh, it suggested uh, some generic strategies. But with this value chain model, it has some specific uh, strategies for specific activity within an organization. This model identifies specific critical leverage points where a firm can use IT most effectively and to enhance its competitive position. The value chain model views the firm as a series of chain. That is where uh, the word uh, value chain model came. It views um, it views the firm as a series of or a chain of basic activities. Let's say this activity, the other activity, and another activity linked to another activity. That uh, these basic these basic activities can add um, a margin of value to a firm's uh, products or services. So uh, we'll be talking about these activities. Actually, the activities in the value chain model can be categorized as either uh, primary activities or uh, secondary activities. In this, this is the real model that we, 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 we are talking about. It has two activities. This one here is primary activities and the second one here as support activities. When we talk about the primary activities, these activities most directly related to the production and distribution of firms, products and services which actually create value for the customer. So all those activities which are directly related to the production all those activities that are directly related to the distribution of the firm's products and services, these are found under a category called the primary activities. Uh, it is like the start from the raw materials to the finished product. This, these activities, all of these activities are categorized in a category called the primary activities. There is where you will find some activities like uh, inbound logistic. Speaking of inbound logistics, all those activities that involve receiving and storing materials for, di for distribution or receiving and storing materials for production. So in this here, you will find um, activities that involve warehousing, uh, activities that involve storage, activities like that. So 
information systems specific for inbound activities, you will find some things like automated warehousing systems. So um, automatic warehousing systems are systems that uh, automatically uh, takes raw materials from wherever they come from and stores them automatically, arrange them according to uh, how they should be uh, stored. In primary activities also we have what we call operational uh, activities. Speaking of operations or operational activities, these are all those activities that are uh, transform the inputs into finished products. Remember, in inbound activity, we take raw materials, then we store those raw materials. But when we come to operations, here is where we transform these raw materials or into finished products. It's like the production activities, all the production activities. So in here, how can we use information system? We can have some uh, computer system like uh, computerized controlled machine systems. If you ever went to um, a manufacturing companies like uh, companies, soda companies, Pepsi, Cola uh, companies, Coca-Cola companies, you will find there are some machines where these uh, take um, ingredients, take the raw materials, mix them, uh, Pour the, put them in the bottles, then uh, fill up the bottles, close the bottles, then uh, transform the bottle to uh, other uh, parts where they should be stored. Uh, such systems are computerized controlled machine systems. Um, they are the information systems that can help in these activities. As we have said, in a, a value chain model, the introduction of information system or the use of information technology is for specific activities unlike with the Porter's model where it was very generic it it was a general model it's for general activities but this uh, value chain model is for specific activities as we have seen in inbound uh, logistic activities and in operation activities now we go to uh, uh, sales and marketing uh, activities Sales and marketing activities, here is where you will find some promotion and selling uh, the firm's product. After you have produced, after you have taken raw materials into your machines and uh, produced the finished products through operations activities, there is where you need to promote such products. You need to sell such products to customers. So you have some information systems specifically for sales and marketing. You will find a computerized ordering system. That is just one example. You can find uh, a sales system. You can find um, a payment system in here. You can find advertisement systems. So in sales and marketing, here specifically, strategically, you can use information system to support ordering, to support selling, to support marketing, to support promotion, etc. So that is another activity in a value chain model. We have another um, activity in primary under primary activities. We have services. Speaking of services, here we are talking about maintenance and repair of firms' goods and services. So in under services, here is where you can maintain. Uh, or you can repair the goods, you can repair the services. So what information systems to help such activities? We have equipment maintenance systems. So you can have a system that automates the process of maintenance. You have the system that automates the process of repairing. You have a system that automates the whole process of making sure that the goods and services are in proper order. And again, the last activity that we can find under primary activities is outbound logistic. Outbound logistic entails storing and distributing uh, finished products. After you have uh, taken raw materials through inbound activities, then you have transformed such materials into finished products. Then there is where you can store such uh, finished products. There is where we have introduction, we have information system like automated shipment scheduling systems. So you can use uh, that kind of system uh, as a strategy uh, to improve uh, these specific activities. So this is what we call a value chain model. And through these primary activities, there is where the, f the firm value uh, chain uh, will improve. Again, we have another category. We have another category of a value chain model, we call these support activities. 
Remember, the primary activities are the ones that are important within the firm. But without supporting activities, there you cannot uh, carry out these the so-called primary activities. So support activities, they make the delivery of primary activities possible. And they consist of uh, organization infrastructure. So here you will find uh, some organization infrastructure. There is where uh, you will find administration and uh, management. There is where you will find some administration and uh, management. Uh, you have also some supporting activities like human resources. And the human resources, here you will find some employee recruitment, you will find some hiring, some even firing, some training, etc. So here information system like uh, workforce planning system can be used. Workforce planning system uh, can be used. Uh, we also need uh, technology. Uh, technology is also a support activity. Uh, in technology, you will find... Um, Activities like improving products and the production process and something like that. In the uh, technology, you will find systems like computerized aided design systems. You will find workflow systems. You will find collaborative systems. A lot of systems will be found under support activities. Uh, we have also a procurement. Uh, this is the purchasing unit. Under procurement, uh, you will find some computerized system like computerized purchasing systems. So with the uh, value chain model, as we have said, uh, with all these activities, it is very possible for you to ask yourself at each stage of the value chain, how can, you, can we use information systems to improve operational efficiency? How can we use information system to improve com uh, customer and supplier intimacy? So uh, this will force you to critically examine how you can perform value-adding activities at each stage and how the business processes uh, might be improved. So using the business value chain model, uh, using this uh, business value chain model, uh, you can also cause uh, or you can consider what we call uh, benchmarking. You can consider something called uh, benchmarking. So let us talk about uh, benchmarking. Benchmarking. Uh, speaking of benchmarking, uh, your business processes, you can, you can benchmark your business processes against uh, your competitors or others in a related industry or identifying industry-based uh, practices. When we say benchmarking, what does it mean? Speaking of benchmarking, it's like comparing. You compare uh, the efficiency and the effectiveness of your business processes against strict standards and then measuring performance against those standards. So there are some specific standards that are listed. Let's say in order for your business to perform well, then the standards are one, two, three, four, five. And these standards can be practiced or can be shown by you, your competitors. So what you can do is you compare the efficiency of your business, the effectiveness of your business, business processes, then against those standards. And those standards can also be shown by uh, your competitors. So industry-based practices are usually identified by consulting companies. So you can consult uh, some companies to see how they do their uh, business processes, how they follow or how, how they um, make uh, their business progress. So you can also research some organizations. You can research some government agencies or some industry associations, as well as uh, you can research uh, on most successful solutions or problem-solving methods for constantly and effectively achieving uh, the business objectives. So once you have analyzed the various stages in the value chain model, uh, once you have already uh, analyzed uh, the various stages in the value chain model at your business, then you can come up with the uh, candidate applications. You can decide which to develop first. So you have some uh, best practices you have identified. These are the best practices when I want to, uh, to practice in my, uh, let's say, a business. Then you can come up with candidate applications that... Uh, you can decide either to develop first. So by making some improvements in your own business value chain that your competitors might miss, 
then you can achieve what we call competitive advantages by attaining operational excellence. With that case, you will lower costs, you will improve profit margins, you will be forging a closer relationship with your customers and suppliers. If your competitors are making similar improvements, then at least you will not be at a competitive disadvantage, which is the worst of all uh, cases. Uh, we also have something called um, a, a value, a value uh, web, we call a value web. The firm's value chain can be linked to value chains of suppliers, can be linked to value chains of distributors, the value chains of customers. After all, the performance of most firms uh, depend not only on what goes inside the firm, but also on how well the firm coordinates with the direct and indirect suppliers, delivery firms, some logistic partners, and of course, the customers. So uh, internet technology also has made it possible to create highly synchronized industry value chains that are called the value webs. Speaking of a value web, uh, it's a collection of independent firms. So we have a collection of independent firms and these firms can be suppliers, can be customers, can be distributors, can be other firms. So it's a collection of independent firms that use IT, that is information technology, a collection of independent firms that use information technology to coordinate their value chains, to provide or to produce a product or a service for a market collectively. So a value chain, I'm repeating, is a collection of independent firms that use information technology to coordinate their value chains to produce or to provide a product or service for a market collectively. So you cannot come up with a product just by yourself as a producer. You need suppliers, you need distributors, you need customers. So the collection of those independent firms, they make that, and in fact, they use information technology to coordinate the, their own value chains so that they can produce product or service for a market in their totality or collectively. That is what we call a value web. It is more customer driven and operates in a less linear fashion that the traditional value chain uh, does. So with the value web, it's not that much uh, linear. That means uh, it is like this. If this is a distributor and this is your uh, firm, the distributor, the supplier, the customers, you can all uh, coordinate your value chains so that you can produce a product or service collectively using information technology. So thank you very much uh, for following Elmi Kamtandaoni. Don't forget to subscribe, 